so that's the question. The question is bugging me all week. It's been bugging me. You know, you want to know why it's been bugging me? I'll tell you why it's been So, I was talking on the phone with my mother. And she says, she saw a picture of me. She said, well, that's a real nice suit that you're wearing. That is such a blessing. So I said, Ma, is it really a blessing? It's just a, it's a suit, right? <laughs> well, it is a, it's a suit, and so, you know, you, you got nice clothes, that, that is, that is a blessing. So I don't know, I don't know. You're going to have to get back to me on that. But it's been bugging me, it's been bugging me all week with this one question. That question is, this is material possession inherently a blessing. Is material possession inherently a blessing? And you got all kind of people come from uh, prosperity churches or people that will they'll, they'll look at a Jeff Bezos and they'll say he's blessed. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. If I want to stop right there and just open it up to, to get your your take, your initial thoughts on that. And then give me a why or why not, and then we'll go through some, uh, some scriptures. But one question right there. Is material possession inherently a blessing? I can get out the guitar and pick up the floor. I think it is. You work hard all your life, huh? What's that? Okay. Okay, so if you work hard all your life, for it and God blesses you with it. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It could be so. If that's all you're working for, then you've lost the whole thing. Mmm. Well, that second part right there. Okay. It yeah, could be so. Uh, no, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> I came here. I, I yeah, you got to repeat it for do. Okay. Uh, so he said, it, it, it is something that you've been working for your whole life, and God blesses you with it, okay? Well, that's a blessing. However, and correct me if I'm wrong, if that's all you're working for, then you missed it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what did you say, Chuck? I was going to say that uh, if, it's, uh, if it's something that you never had okay. and just never been like, Something you desire, but not necessarily just working to get in someone come across and bless you with it, then I would think that is a blessing. Okay. A blessing. Okay. Say more about that. Say more about that. Um, just say, for instance, you know, a car is something that everybody needs. Okay. Um, me and my wife first got married. <laughs> we didn't have a car. Right. Um, it wasn't that, you know, we was just in desperation to have a car, but someone literally came and blessed us with a vehicle with no charge. Okay. And to me, that was a material thing, but it was a blessing from God. Okay. Okay. And I think that it really depends on the person. I mm. think it's, a, it's an opinion. Because what may be a blessing to me may not be a blessing to somebody else. And what somebody else has may be a blessing because it's a lot. But with someone with a little, they may still feel like they have the whole world. So okay. it's a matter of opinion. And I also believe that what you have does not um, state your relationship or your stance with God. Okay. Like materialistic things don't mean that God is pleased with your life. Or mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. I think that's going to take us down some road right there. Because <laughs> Norma has something. Right. No? I did. <laughs> <laughs> out, out raising my finger. To <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say if um, the focus is primarily material, materialistic, mm -hmm. then no, it's not a blessing. Okay, um, it's not biblical. Okay, blessing. That's that's worldly. Blessing. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, the world's principles as to what a blessing is. Okay. They look at 
the more you get, the more toys, the more stuff, the, the greater, right. you know, the bigger the house, the, that that's the blessing. Right. And miss the intrinsic blessings. Right, right, right. But yeah, that's true. Intrinsic blessings like we got up this morning. Health. That's a blessing. You know, strength. And so, so, so that's a blessing. But a lot of times we tend to think of like, oh, well, you know, that, that money, that is the blessing. And I'm not saying it's not, because I think, to me, you hit on a great point. It depends on the person and, and how you're using it. How you're using it. I saw your hand almost go up. It's not. Oh, uh, so you, you <laughs> know, it, it was like, so what I saw was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was eating. Oh, oh. <laughs> she's sleeping. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. They're gonna leave you alone. They're gonna leave you alone. All right, all right. She's gonna have to wave her hand next time. No, yeah, I'm not gonna call her. You put your hand way up. Right? <laughs> she brought her snack. <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right, so good points. Anybody else got any other points? Any points online? Anybody online? Yes, Brittany's on, but no points yet. Hey, Brittany, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Let us know. Uh, let us know if you can hear us. Uh, if the uh, and I'll repeat the ones that are low. But if you cannot hear us, we'll, we'll adjust the microphone to make sure that you can hear us and you can be part of this conversation. This great conversation on materialism. No, materialism. Oh, repeat the question one more time. I just want to make sure I got that locked in my brain. Is material possession inherently a blessing. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Brittany has a comment. Okay. What's she got? Everyone can be materialistic at times, thinking they need things they really don't. A lot of the things that we have usually are or can be used to help bless others. Mm. It's back to the point about how is it being used. All right. So good. Great point. Let's start with going uh, or continue with going to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy twenty eight. I mean, we started at one and understand understand in context this this is uh, these are directions that are being given to uh, being given to the Israelites. The Deuteronomy twenty eight and one just start with one. Okay. Okay, sorry. So th this is where this is coming from. One. And it reads, If you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully follow all his commandments I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Me, by the way. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks, your basket, and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. Again, this is referencing uh, the Israelites. As he, as he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, uh, the young of your livestock, and the crops, uh, and the crops on your ground, and the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heaven, will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless you and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. 
If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. And then, in the following, for the verses that follow, follow the curses for disobedience. So really the exact opposite of what you just heard. And so with that in mind, and the big title on mine is the, the blessings for obedience and the curses for disobedience. How does that change your perspective on blessings? Does it change your perspective on blessings? Does it add a little more depth to it? Because he's, in this, it's tied to me, it's tied to obedience. It's tied to that relationship with God and walking in obedience to Him. So, thoughts there? That's what Jesus said. He seeks first the kingdom. That's right. And That's all right. these things shall be added unto you. That's right. That's so, right. Uh, if your focus is on the things mm -hmm. and you might acquire the things, they still wouldn't be a blessing from God. Mm. If your focus is on the kingdom, okay. and you acquire the things, then yeah. 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 He made yeah. comment about that, Messiah did. It'll, it's harder for a rich man to get to heaven than it is to put a camel through the eye of a needle. And he blessed the woman, and he said that the woman that gave the two pennies, all that she had, was going to be blessed beyond measure because she did it in obedience and she gave all she had. Again, if you're after it for materialistic sake, Good. then you're on the wrong path. Good. Good. I think a couple of people brought that up. That you know, what what is the priority? Which leads me to something that um, that I came across, and let me give you the source. So. It's actually what this is about. Um, I haven't read a lot of their work. I just came across this, the Christian Truth Center. And it talks about, uh, it, so the title of the article is Not Every Worldly Wealthy Person is Blessed by God. And as you go through the article, it talks about three sources, and, and I'll read them out, three sources of wealth. Prosperity, if you will. One source is God. Another source is Satan. And another source is work, your own work. Just going after it. Anybody got any others that you can kind of that you would add to that to that list of three? Or is that a pretty good list? Or do you, do you agree with the ones that are on the list? Go ahead. Um, going back a little bit, it kind of reminds me of um, King Solomon. He was one of the richest um, mm -hmm. kings in the Bible. And the thing about him was he acquired it by just obeying God. Right. And when he had the chance to ask God for one thing, he asked for wisdom. So he That's didn't right. seek it. That's right. And because of his relationship with God, that acquired him wealth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jumping ahead on me. You read my notes. <laughs> right? Right? So Solomon, absolutely. You have anything you want. I just want wisdom. I just I just want to be wise. I just want to be wise. It's like smart man. Guess what? You get everything. You get everything. Now like the, the talents. The dude that took it out and invested it and brought back twice as much. That's right. He was rewarded for good stewardship. Very good. Very good. Uh, say that again. Get that quote you just read. Sure. Where, the, where the blessings come from? Yeah. Okay, so three sources of, of material possession. I won't necessarily call them blessings, but three sources. God, Satan, or your own work, the work of your hand. You're not actively seeking to to Please God or Satan. It's just you and your shovel trying to make money. And that's it. That's your focus. 
Right. We were going to ask, like, um, scripture came to mind when you first started talking about this. Mm -hmm. and it's Deuteronomy 8 18. Okay. When you said Deuteronomy, that was the one that I was thinking okay. about. Okay. <laughs> what you got? What you Deuteronomy. got? It says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, mm -hmm. that he may establish his covenant, mm -hmm. which, which he swear unto the fathers as it is to this day. So he gives the uh, power to gain material mm -hmm. blessings, material wealth, yeah. not blessings, but right. material wealth okay. for the establishment of his covenant, for the establishment of the kingdom, which goes back to what Jesus said, seek first the kingdom, right. and all these things are added in. Right. So if, if uh, like you said, if a person has a bunch of, has wealth, mm -hmm. but their focus is self and mm -hmm. the world and the things of the world and completely leaving God out. Mm -hmm. And that automatically puts them on the side of Satan. Okay. Not, see, he's automatically there. He okay. Be, if, 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 if all he's know. thinking about is himself, it doesn't matter. He's automatically there because he's left God out of the picture. So you disagree with the list. You say that two and three are I'm the same thing. Okay. okay. So I guess you kind of answered Brittany's question here. She says, I guess I've never understood why God felt a certain way about having a lot of money. I know some millionaires earn it by dishonest ways, but a lot of them work super hard and honestly to get what they get. Why does having money inherently make it harder to know God? Because you get materialistic and you think it's by your own hand and you've left God out. Yeah. That would be my answer to you, Brittany. Yeah, yeah. If you have left God out of the equation, then you're probably on on the wrong on the wrong path. Go ahead, sir. People that are most unhappy people. Mm, right, right. We can't hear you. Unhappy. They're unhappy. They have had more money than they knew what to do with, but they were putting it. They couldn't have any kind of satisfaction. They could be longing for something all the time. It never was enough. And it's just, in fact, I've seen people die in that shape. Yeah. And it's just pitiful. Yeah. Uh, this gives me my family and my health and God's blessings. And I, I was felt so much richer than any of them. Mm. Amen. There's there's a story in, in Hawaii about a guy who lives on the beach who had made and lost several million dollars several times in his lifetime. When he had money, though, he was miserable. He was a drug addict when he had the money. And when he didn't, and he lived on the beach and he recycled cans, and that's the little bit of money he had, he was happier than he was ever. Yeah. No, that's... That's good. That's, uh, so that's why money can sometimes, because money cannot buy you happiness. No. The Bible says it's the root of all things. Is, is the love of money. It's not money, it's the love of it. Yep. Well, right, and that's an important distinction, right? Yes. Because yeah. you, could, you can have money, and still, but it's not your end all be all. Right. As long as God is your end all be all, then cool, money, resources, uh, and then we'll, we'll, as we jump forward, uh, I'll, I'll throw another, uh, uh, another thought in on that, and that is, how do you use it, right? How, how do you use that? Are you just like, I mean, I know I'm like older or younger than everybody, but if y'all remember DuckTales, remember yeah. DuckTales, yeah. Scrooge McDuck, yeah. and yes, sir. swimming in the, in the vault of gold and everything, gold coins, y'all remember that, right? What was he doing with all that? I think there was like one episode where he eventually like gave to the poor, but he didn't want to give nothing to nobody. It was just all about him. I mean, think about it. Bill Gates and and his <coughs> wife, or ex-wife now, they give away millions of dollars, millions and millions of dollars every year. Could they give more? Probably. But they still give away millions of dollars every year trying to do good. And it is, Brittany asked the question is, do you think it's possible to be rich and not greedy? Yes, yeah, it absolutely is. Because if, as you love to say, take care of the widows and the orphans. Yeah, well, I just, I'm just going 
I, I, I know. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that, but that's one of your key phrases, my dear. Um, if you're taking care of those that need to be taken care of, then yes, you can. And, and there's ways to still be, and a lot of us do it. There's still ways to be solvent as a family and still right. help the kingdom. Yes. Uh, let's see, material possessions, have we covered all of those? Um, well, I mean, here, here's one certainly on the idea of being, being too caught up. If you go to uh, Matthew 19, 16 and 22, about the, uh, about the young ruler. Anybody would love to read that? Please read it. Uh, Are you talking about what must... What Matthew good 19. must I do to have eternal life? That's the one. That's the one. And the key uh, passage that we were talking about in, uh, tonight would be uh, even, uh, number 22, but uh, if you would read. Uh, okay. Verse 16. Uh, Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what, must, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and come to the poor, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Mm -hmm. He loved money more than he loved God. That's he right. loved his possessions. That's right. He valued his possessions more if than. Been, if he'd have been obedient, I believe God would have blessed him double over. Right, right. Just like he did Joe. Right, right. May have, may have. <clears throat> um, you know, and as I've thought about that verse so over time, I mean, that to me, one, that's, that's a hugely stark contrast. I mean, it's just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, so when I look at, at that passage, I mean, it's something that we read often. We read it, you know, we read it at children's church. We talk about it, but it's a, it's a huge moment of decision. It's a huge moment of decision and a stark contrast that the Gospels paint between the love of and the pursuit of money and the love of and the pursuit of Christ right there in that moment. It's like... Choose. Choose. And he did. Go ahead. I think it was a combination of his love for his will, and also God said, you can't please me without faith. And he mm -hmm. trusted more in his will than he did the will and the plan of God. Love it. So he should really go. This lesson, though, we are seeing all the way back to the 40 years in the desert. Mm -hmm. when, he, when, he, when God provided manna, for them every day. He said, go and collect just what you need. Anything more, what did they do? They found in the morning was moldy and bad and they couldn't fold with worms or flies or whatever. They couldn't eat it. So it was, it was to that point sh showing that, the, that you didn't need to have more than what you needed. It, it also shows when you look at the um, the Shemitah year, the, the, the every seventh year, in, that you're not supposed, you're supposed to allow the fate of the land and the animals to rest, right. do nothing with them, and and what God does when you follow that rule, what God does is He doubles your bounty or triples your bounty in the sixth year and doubles your bounty or triples it in the eighth year because you left that seventh year alone because you obeyed. He blessed you on the on on the front and the back side, knowing that it was going to be a little more difficult. He blessed you in in those years. So again, keep his commandments, and he'll take care of you. That's good. That's good. I mean, even 
on a smaller scale, I find that if I take a rest day from the gym, I can lift more, I can run faster that next day just by resting. Just by resting. Yeah. Um, what was I going to do? I was going to, uh, oh, I was going to prove to you, uh, which you already know, that Satan can be a source of wealth. Look at uh, Matthew 4, 8, very short passage. It says again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. So, right, there, there is certainly biblical proof that, yeah, Satan can be a, a source of that wealth. Now, he's also the father of lies, so <laughs> whether or not he would have got anything out of it. Well, we see evil men in power. We do. And in authority and in wealth, so. Yeah. We do. We, we do. We do. And, you know, my thing is, uh, I can't know. I mean, I don't know, I, from the great majority, I don't know their heart. I don't know their heart because I don't know most of them. But I'm pretty sure there are some of those that are just. <laughs> And I would just like to add that the Bible also says that God reigns on the just as well as the, the unjust. unjust. Yeah. Yep. And so, like, everything belongs to God. Right. He allows people to come into certain things. Right. And, and it, it all boils down to him giving us the free will to choose. That's right. So are you going to, like, Jesus, he came down here, he chose to be the sacrificial lamb. And so he wants us to choose him in the mix of all the other choices. Are you going to take hands with the devil and get what he offers you, or are you going to stand under the blood? Like, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't sit around staring at farms, but like you said, the rains on the just and the unjust alike. If it's, if it's raining on the on, on the believer's, you know, crops, the uh, the non-believer next door, well, <laughs> so. Although he does say that he'll keep rain from no, as part of the curse, that. but yeah, that. I'm just saying it. Does, but it also does okay. rain on both. Yes. There is a rail. <laughs> there, yeah. Oh yeah. If you go oh yeah. Too far. Yep. That's right. Yep. That's right. Uh, let's see. Next question. Next question is right here. Can a poor or unhealthy person be counted as blessed? Yes. Could you ask your question? Ask Can a poor or unhealthy person be counted as blessed? The woman with two pennies. The woman with two pennies. Good. Good. No, that's. The woman of blood. Yeah. The blind man. The man that couldn't walk. <laughs> we need to go on down the line. Leprosy. <laughs> The dude that got lit, 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 lowered through the ceiling. So there are so many people. There are so many, <laughs> so many examples, biblical examples. And so why do I ask that? Yeah, it's a simple question, and um, you know the. Uh, but you're right. Prosperity of teaching says that if you're poor or if you're in bad health, it's because you didn't pray enough, you didn't give yes, enough, you didn't, you didn't or give enough to the church. Yes, yeah, right. You didn't attitude. give enough to the church. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. Yes. And that's why you're asking that question. Yeah, and sometimes they'll say, well, yeah, I know you gave all your money, and no, we're not going to give it back even though your blessing didn't come through, but you just didn't have enough faith. faith. Well, that's what they <laughs> said. Yeah, yeah. a little oh, bit right. more, maybe you'd have got in there, but you didn't, so thanks for the check. Um, really is. Yeah, you know, but that, that is I that is common thinking. That was the thinking of the, uh, of the Pharisees, you know, Think, oh well, you have all of this, and so you must, you must be blessed because you have all of these things. But that's not that's not true. It's not a pure. It's not a pure correlation, you know, because of you know if if we buy into that if we buy in, into that um, that construct that there are those three 
okay, I'll say 2A and, you know, 1, 2A and 2B sources <laughs> of wealth, <laughs> that it didn't necessarily have to come from God. Right. It could have come from your own materialism. It could have come from yeah. Satan. And so you got to be very careful about that. Uh, let's see. I, I think I have to weigh in with you on that one. And I go back to this, the, the, this, the, that quote going, all it takes for evil to triumph is good men to do nothing. Yeah, yeah I think there's only one and two. <laughs> Just one and two. And, and the author does say that too. Did you yeah. say, okay, Brittany right. says, did you say God said he would make you poor or sick if you don't do the right things? No, no. that is not what we said. No, Brittany. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're saying that the exact opposite. We're saying that there are preachers out there that say that, but that they're wrong. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it, it goes to, for instance, I had a friend of mine, he used to be uh, uh, caught up in what's known as the naming and claiming and prosperity gospel kind of mindset. And I, and I would ask him simply, I mean, can you teach that anywhere in the world? Or is that a strictly uh, Western mindset. Mm. Can you go to Africa and teach that? Can you go to Can you go to India and teach that? Can you You can't teach those things right. everywhere. Mm. It just does not fly. Yes. Mm. And, and, if, and if God is unchanging, right. then the word and, and would the apply. principles and the precepts should apply across the, oh, across the world and across the, the universe. Really. Mm -hmm. um, Philippians four. 10 through 13. We're talking about, uh, talking about poor people, rich people. Really, it's kind of applies to all. Uh, Paul says, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord uh, that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Uh, and so if we if we can kind of look at the the spectrum, you know, so I, I would say that, that wealth exists on a spectrum that you go from zero to everything, or a lot. But there's an opportunity in all of that to, to be content and really even to, to be blessed, whether you're, you're healthy or unhealthy. You know, I, I'd love to tell the story of the guy in, uh, in Australia. Um, he had colon cancer. And uh, he, he, was, he was very faithful at our uh, go to this, uh, this Bible study, um, this home study, but he got to the point where he had to go into hospice, and uh, the part about the story that's to me is just so, so encouraging is that one of his brothers was agnostic, his other brother was an atheist, and you know, when brother's dying, it shouldn't matter what you are, what you believe in, you probably go see about it, right? And so he took that time, he spent that time when they would come visit him to witness to them, mm -hmm. to share the gospel. Even though he was on his deathbed, he shared the gospel, he shared the gospel. Um, and so even in that, that moment, there's a blessing for him, there was that blessing and that opportunity that his family, that, that his family who he knew did not, uh, did not know Christ, did not know God, could at least hear about it one more time, maybe plant that seed. Um, and um, I, I, I would say that he would probably say it was well worth it if even one of them made it in, into heaven that he was able to share, share that love in that moment. Uh, he was on his way to uh, to meet God. 
I heard a man say this one time, and it kind of fits with what you just said. He said, God don't mind you getting the blessings, just, he just don't want you to get the glory. Mm, right. <laughs> and okay. that's the problem with most of the materialistic mindset when it comes to blessing, is that we want the glory too. We want the blessing, but we want the glory. We want the money, we want the glory. We want the, we want the honor. That goes back to, uh, again, to Deuteronomy 8. In verse right. 17, he said, you, you know, you've forgotten about me. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that gives you the power to get it. Right. It all starts with me. So, a poor or unhealthy person can be counted as blessed, good, awesome. The next movement of this is be careful about conflating, mixing up the sources of blessing. The reason I say this is because it's easy to look at the next door neighbor or to look at so and so and say, and, and you know, I'm just be jealous. Oh man, I wish I had that. I wish I had that. But like you said, there's a lot of there's a lot of rich people out there that are miserable. Miserable. A lot of people, rich people out there that don't have, you know, the, the source of their the source of, of their wealth was not a was not a holy and righteous source. The source of their wealth was was, was something other, was something other, uh, and, and because of that, you know, unfortunately, they don't, they, they don't get the joy, they don't get the joy, like you said about the guy in Hawaii, you know, he was in a, in a state of joy when he was poor, when he was collecting cans, uh, but it's so easy to do, because, and um, we're, as we're talking about Samson and talking through Samson, the idea that there are things that creep into the church. The idea that, oh, well, we should be like them. Oh, we should be like them. We need more of this. We need more of that. But do you know the cost of all that? Do we understand the cost of all that? I'm not talking about a money cost. I'm talking about, you the know, suffering, the pain. Are, are we going to yes. end up, you know, because we're all of a sudden, you know, City Church Mega Edition that we got to water down the gospel. That we got to, you know, just placate people that say and do any and everything and, and, and this is just becomes another social club. Because if that's the cost, I don't want that. I don't want that. Uh, that's kind of like what it says in the Proverbs, Proverbs 30, uh, verse 7. It says, Two things I have required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. So basically he's just saying, allow me to be content, mm -hmm. just like Paul said. Allow me to be in a place of contentment with you. Yeah. That no matter what state I am, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether I'm rich or poor, rich or poor, mm -hmm. just let me be in a place of contentment right. where uh, I don't blaspheme you on the air and I don't, forget, don't let me get so high and mighty that I forget who you are. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's easy to do when, when you're chasing after the money and you start to see, oh, I did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, now you start going down that path. Be very careful. I like when you just said, I, I did that because when Dan and I arrived at the church today, mm -hmm. there was an overload of food, yeah. new clothes, mm. new shoes, mm. household products lined it on the side of that 
sidewalk. Wow. And I said, no one called me to tell me they were leaving anything. And there was not a name or a number on it. Mm -hmm. So we, we still today don't know who did it, who left it, but it was a multiply of things for the community, for our outreach. So it doesn't matter, like you say, people be want to say, I did that, right. that was me. But whoever done that great deed today, that good deed today, didn't even leave a name, address, phone number, not the first to call and say, thank you for your giving. And, and when I, it took us, what, about four pallet things to get inside the door. Oh, wow. You know, we were talking about God yeah. getting the glory. First uh, Peter 4 says, If anyone speaks, it should be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, it should be from the strength God provides, so that God may be glorified through Messiah in everything. To him belong the glory. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. And the other piece, I would say, so you got the source. Then we got to look at how is that being used, right? Is it? Because if God blesses you, if you're saying it's a blessing from God, then what would you have to do with that blessing? You know, use it for the uplifting of His kingdom, help the widows and orphans, and oh, by the way, to not be corrupted by the world. That's the other part of that that verse. Um, so I will uh, <coughs> go ahead, sir. I want to pray for the Sunday who was doing the offertory. <coughs> You're blessed so you can be a blessing to others. Yes. And that, and that is, I used to have an old preacher that said, God don't need your money. He owns all the cattle on the hills and all the taters under the hill. He said, He don't need your money. But he needs your obedience. Yes. Yeah. He needs your obedience. And that's where also then obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. That's right. It's better than sacrifice. Mm. That, is, that is good. That is good. And so as we look at those things from, you know, we, so we start with the question. What was the question when we started? Was, is a material, <coughs> is a material possession inherently a blessing? I'd like to answer that. You want to answer that? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Bible teaches several, several things, principles that we're to follow. And we can't pick and choose which ones of those we follow. That's right. Without being hypocritical. <laughs> um, for me and for my, our household, and I mean, just thinking about all the things that you ta everybody's talked about here. The principle of tithing. Mm. He says, if you read what he says he will do mm -hmm. for you, That's right. if you obey That's and bring right. the tithe into the storehouse, That's right. those are blessings. Yeah. Yeah. He's not. <coughs> I mean, that even that includes material things. That's right. Now, your attitude toward those, whether or not they're worshipped or. That's what you're doing it for. I mean, if you're tithing to get back, mm -hmm. you've missed it. Right. right. It's, a, it, it's a command, and it's a, a principle that we're to follow regardless. Right. It's called faith. That's right. I'm doing this in faith. Mm -hmm. But he says that he will fill our bonds to overflow. That's right. That's it's, right. And, and if we don't do it, what does he say? First he says we rob him. I don't want to rob God. <laughs> but you're absolutely right because then again, if you have that mentality of doing the tithe for the tithe's sake, not for that, then you're also then going to, it's going to follow through on the rest of your stuff. You're going to use that bounty to take care of his kingdom. Absolutely. You're, so it's all, you know, it's all like she said, choice. It's all, you know, it's all the, the attitude behind it. It isn't, like you're right. If you get something you never expected to get, Absolutely, that's a blessing. But again, it's how then you use yeah. that bounty, that blessing but I to don't further. But it's a bad thing. No, 
if you, I do consider it, if you've been blessed to have a nice suit, absolutely it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. As long as you look at it. I mean, I look at every single thing I have, including this 13-year-old that's about to, that's, you know, he's that teenager, so. <laughs> I mean, everything in my life, from, the, from my shoes on my feet to, I consider it a blessing. Absolutely. But then you have but, that mentality. And yeah. that's, that, was the, that was one of the things that, that kept running through my mind this week as I was thinking about this, this question, and it really ties into what you said, that some of it really has to do, I say a large portion of it has to do with the receiver. How, how do you receive it? The way you look at it. Do you receive it as a blessing? Because some people might say, I'm laying here in hospice. I've been living right, eating right, and now I got colon cancer. That, you know, that's a curse. You can view it that way, and very, you know, probably very few people would be able to be like, no nah, man, you're wrong. That's a blessing. But because he was able to see it as a blessing. Because he was able to see it as that opportunity to share the gospel with his brothers. Now, even something that the world will look at. Man, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Like, for him and his family, that was a bit of a blessing. I think it's like she said, it's about giving the glory to God. I mean, right. it, it, it's your mentality. That's it's right. Everything that you have right. is because God has chosen to bless you. If you're obedient, mm -hmm. you know what the truth is? If you're obedient to his word, I mean obedient, yeah. he's going to bless you. Because yeah, if he you. doesn't, then his he's, word then word he's a liar. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible says he's a God. He can't That's right. That's right. So, yeah, that's good. He will bless you. That's good. And I, I just... Uh, you know, but he wants the glory, like she said. Absolutely. Absolutely. The glory. absolutely. And, it, and that's where the difference is a lot of times. I think we forget that. Yeah. Who do we give the glory Look to? Look what I did. You know, yeah. we worked really hard for that. I, I, right. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Job was another really great example of that. Which chapter? <laughs> I'm not about to dis discuss that with the master of Job, thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've spent years on Job by now. No, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> He's the one that's going to come up with the verse, not me. I would say we definitely have to be careful and watchful um, of how we try to go about receiving of materials. Yeah. Elisha or Elisha, back when he healed Naaman, and Naaman wanted to give him silver and you know mm -hmm. materialistic things or whatnot. He was like, as long as I'm doing it in God's name, I don't want any of it. That's but it. then he had the serpent that was walking with him and decided to go back mm -hmm. and thought that he was going to be awarded to himself and whoever come out mm -hmm. but yeah. ended up cursing himself and his family to come. Right. So we have to be careful of how we're looking at receiving materialistic things. That's right. That's Miriam right. That's got good. smacked down too when she tried to say, "Well, God talks to me too," mm -hmm. and then she got leprosy. She got leprosy. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that that is a great point because we, as, you know, as, as Messiah was, we can be tempted by calling non blessings, right? And I, I would say, like you said, be careful, be prayerful about that because not not every not every gift is <laughs> not every gift is for, for us and it's not every us. gift is free. Right. And, and the sad point about the serpent that was walking with Alicia, he was already blessed because he was walking with the blessing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So good good points. Good points. Time. Time? Okay, fine. <laughs> well then I'll close with this and then we'll pray if people want to hang around and have our conversation we will. But uh, First Chronicles 4 and 10. Four and ten. The prayer of Jabez, there have been books written about really this, you know, one, one verse of scripture. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, 
Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. So the idea I take from that is, yeah, it's, is it okay to want things? Yeah, so. But what did Jabez say? He said, yeah, enlarge my territory, but let's keep my hand from evil. It is, you know, he understood in that moment, and we don't hear a whole lot about Jabez other than this, but it's so impactful. Um, he understood that the enlarged territory, that the wealth could draw him to evil. And so if you, you know, God, if you're going to give me a blessing, keep my hand from evil, because I may not know how to handle it. Some of us don't know how to handle it. And so we, we, need, we need that guiding hand so that, so that we can do God's will. Is the problem having wealth? No. We're obedient to God, though. I think that's that's the key. Let's start there. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things will be will be added to you. You may not be building a rocket to fly in the suborbit or whatever, but He'll He'll bless you. And I would say, you know, you do need to understand how to receive those blessings. How to recognize the blessings. It's not all blessings are monetary. Some blessings are just going to be health. Some blessings are just going to be friendship. Some blessings are just going to be, you know, all these things that if you didn't have them, you'd know. You'd know. But you know, they had the song, you know, name your, you know, count your many blessings. Name them. One, one by one. one. One by one. One by one. All right. So let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are faithful to your word, that you have been so faithful to us even when we haven't been faithful to you. Help us to understand just how to follow you so obediently just to to thirst after you, to follow after you, to chase after you. And help us to understand when and how you bless us. And don't let us keep that to ourselves. Let us spread it out. Let us use the gifts that you give us, the talents, the wealth, whatever it is, to bless others and to bring glory to your kingdom. Jesus' name. Yeah. Also, Friday is first Friday. If you want to come? Fire talk. Fire talk is we talk now. Yes. That's not right. No, it's not. It's not. All right. Cool. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Thanks to the people online. Thank you. All right. And uh, have a wonderful. Anybody that wants to stay and help put chairs back, that would be great.
long that packet, packet, packet. I think it's 10, correct? I don't know for sure. I think it's 10. 